much did the pirate's new earrings cost him? How much? A buccaneer! This is the Epic Dad Podcast, episode number 12. On this week's episode, we have a conversation about vulnerability. Welcome to the Epic Dad Podcast. I'm your host, Jason McCleary, and I'm here to help you create better relationships, better health, and an all-around amazing life. Each week, I feature interviews with experts to deliver inspiration, motivation, tools, and tricks to create the life you love. The Epic Dad Podcast is here to help you become your best self as a parent, spouse, and all-around epic human being. If you want to remove yourself from the drift and start taking intentional steps to become the epic dad you always wanted to be, then this podcast is for you. Hello and welcome back. I am your host, Jason McCleary. Thank you so much for listening. I am immensely grateful that you are here for yet another episode. This week has been a bit crazy as usual. Uh, Kids headed back to school after a a nice long winter break. And I'm feeling a bit older today as when this episode airs will be my oldest daughter's 13th birthday. Feels like just yesterday that I was holding her in my arms for the first time. But how time flies. Before we get into the episode, once again, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss any of the guests we have coming up. Also, if you're looking for a group of like-minded men who leave their egos out of the community and help each other grow to become better fathers, husbands, and all-around epic men, then be sure to check out the Epic Dad community over on Facebook. You can find it at epicdadpodcast.com slash community or search for Epic Dad community in Facebook. On the episode this week, I spoke with Dan Doty, co-founder of everyman.com. We had a great conversation about vulnerability, the role of men as leaders, and so much more. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. Hello, Epic Dads. My guest this week is the co-founder of Everyman, an organization that educates men on how to relate and connect to others by being vulnerable through men's groups, retreats, and wilderness expeditions. It's also the host of the Everyman podcast, a weekly conversation that brings men together to slow down, feel deeply, and express who they really are, giving listeners permission to do the same. Please welcome to the Epic Dad podcast, Mr. Dan Doty. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Excited to be here. Yeah. Again, Dan, thank you very much for for coming on. I appreciate you know the, the work you've been doing. Um, I've I've heard you talk several times in, in your TEDx and uh, a couple other podcasts that you've been on. And I, I kind of wanted to get started before we get into you know every man and and all that. But what does you know? I, I like to start a little bit with the family. So, what's the Doty household look like these days? <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm actually sitting right outside it, so I'll describe it physically. <laughs> so uh, it is across. Uh, the view there is a mountain range and right now it's shrouded in clouds and mist and we live right on a river and it's a lush uh, green forested river and we sit on a little cliff and parked on that cliff is a 32 foot uh, RV in which right now my wife is um, beating up some fresh chicken eggs from the farm nice and feeding our two little ones so we have a 10 month old named Jude uh, son and a three-year-old named Duke, another son. And yeah, we're living a very, very sort of quiet, slowed down, uh, special little life right now. That's perfect, man. Cause I think, you know, a lot of, uh, and I'm sure my listeners can relate to this piece is we seem to be very much in the, uh, rat race for better, you know, words. So, you know, we do our job and, and don't necessarily get the time to, um, sit down and really, be where we are. Right. So I think that that sounds amazing. Yeah. My wife and I, at least we're to the point where, um, we can't really handle anything, but <laughs> just <laughs> slowing down together, you know, that's become our, it's really become our way of life. Nice. Yeah. Um, so let's get started. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about every man and you know, why the work you're doing there is, is so important to you. Yeah, um, I'll give you a quick version. Every man simply brings men together to really peel back the different layers of depth that we can have uh, with ourselves and each other. You can have a the surface layer of meeting people and being in your head and just judging them and assessing them. You can go a little bit deeper and uh, have a more interactive experience with people where you where you kind of give and take. You can go even deeper and allow yourself to be impacted and impact other people by slowing down, by really um, taking the, the steps to really, to really have an impact on each other and connect. Um, 
And then, you, you know, there's sort of this deepest level of human connection where you don't hold anything back and neither do the people around you. And uh, it becomes this very fluid, uh, magical, supportive relationship. And so at Every Man, we go right there. We really, through a simple, simple series, and I mean kindergarten simple um, set of processes and protocols, we just show up and we and we just um, we kind of elegantly cut right through all the BS, mm -hmm. and um, the results are just really, really beautiful and um, very consistent. And so, yeah, we have a whole community of men around the country and around the world now who. Um, whose lives are better because of this, they're better dads, which, you know, I figured we'd chat a lot about today, how that kind of relates. But yeah, 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 it's, it's guys don't have to be alone. We don't have to go through life alone and we don't have to um, hold our feelings inside. Those are the two things I think that we uh, combat directly. You know, that's interesting. You kind of bring up the, uh, you know, we don't have to be alone thing. It seems like as we get older, the, um, the relationships that we create team seem to get fewer and fewer, you know, it, it, college, it's really easy to get a group of guys together. You hang out all the time and then, you know, you graduate, it gets a little busy, you start a family and then, you know, you, you get more comfortable being within that, that family group. And mm -hmm. it seems not as easy to, especially as, really create those relationships, but even foster the, you know, the existing relationships and friendships you had in the past, um, seems to get more difficult as, as the, as you grow. Well, that's statistically validated. So, uh, middle-aged men have the fewest and the least deep, uh, mm. friendships of any other subgroup in our population. That's, that's statistically validated. Mm. And, um, and there's direct correlations to suicide rates. There's direct correlations to, alcoholism and drug abuse. And, uh, because I think this might, you know, resonate deep down to listeners, but as human beings, you know, I don't care <laughs> what sort of form of human being you are. We're not meant to go things alone. We're not yeah. meant to not have connection and friendship and camaraderie. And, you know, for whatever reason, our culture is kind of, um, you know, sectioned off adult men yeah. to not necessarily be rewarded for, for, for that. Um, but the reward is intrinsic in itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So when you're, you're doing these, um, you know, different groups and, and expeditions and such like that, what are, I would imagine that the, the issues and the feelings and, and stuff that they're bringing in are pretty myriad, but is there stuff that's kind of, um, you know, universal in a way like that they're bringing to these, that they're just not feeling that they can share with their spouses, families, partners, whatever it might be. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the cool thing is that, um, there <laughs> rarely does actually almost never does a guy bring in something that he shares and, and that there's not six other guys around the circle. Yeah. Going, oh man, exactly. <laughs> Me too. I can't believe you said that. Yeah. That's exactly how I feel. Um, it's from my perspective at this point, it's like uh, lovingly comical, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, at, at some point, you know, I think maybe we'll all just realize we're not that unique. And, you know, we, yeah. our problems are not, we're not the only ones. In fact, uh, overwhelmingly, pretty much everybody deals with the same problems, but yeah. to name a couple that are, um, that are strong, uh, one, especially for dads is I don't have time for myself. Mm -hmm. I feel guilty for taking yeah. time for yeah. myself. I feel guilty for, uh, you know, either guilty or, or not even possible to, to fill my tank mm -hmm. in order to, um, you know, feel good or be healthy yeah, or things yeah. like that. I think for dad, that's a really common one. And that's a, you know, that's a strategic question. It's actually, that's a tricky one, you know, I mean, for, for dads to, um, find the time and make time for everything that's needed is, is tricky. Um, something I've been taking on personally a lot. Yeah. But, um, other things, just to list a couple other ones, you know, relationship, just relationship issues. I think the, kind of the beautiful thing underneath a lot of the relationship issues when we get really deep into it, a lot of guys honestly just feel like they have a lot more to give or they, they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to mm -hmm. give their love all the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And, you know, you could also kind of imagine that my job just isn't quite fulfilling me. I'm, yeah. I have, I have just basically this sense for more, yeah. right? That's, yeah. that, that, that's often what it, if you had to put it in a, a box, it's like, I just know more is possible. Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, along those lines, we kind of put up, you know, guys kind of put on this mask, you know, and, and they're, they go to work and they have to do the job and then they have to come home and they have to be strong for their family. And, and, you know, uh, if there's anything that's bothering them, they can't really show that. Right. Because that might put more you know, in their minds, that's putting more stress on, you know, their wife, their kids, whatever it might be. So they kind of, you know, hold that in. Yep. It just seems to be a, a big an issue that, you know, I've definitely fought with in my own life and, and, you know, trying to be a little bit more vulnerable and, and showing, you know, not only allowing myself to feel, but showing our, you know, your kids that it's okay to feel right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think that is, if I could isolate maybe one thing that I would love to um, offer dads, or if I, if I had a magic wand, which I don't, but I'm trying to build one. Um, <laughs> if I could wave it and make a change in terms of parenting and fatherhood, it would be that um, we can model yeah. a healthy emotional behavior. Yeah. Just, just model it. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to teach it. Yeah. Just like, you know, show kids that it's okay to get mad and then that gets done and then you can feel sad and you can feel all kinds of things. And it's, and it's just, normal you know yeah. i think uh, my three-year-olds have been very conscious um about this and he's he's deeply 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 emotionally intelligent already it's nice. crazy you know yeah. it's really crazy yeah another i had another guest on um a couple of shows ago that was you know talking about things that they do around the dinner table you know some families pray or or they talk about you know what they're grateful for and you know what went well on their day but one of the things that he's incorporated into his family is, you know, how did you fail this week? And so he wanted to show the importance to his kids that it's okay to fail. And, and not only is it okay to fail, we kind of celebrate failure in a way uh, yeah. and showing how we can learn through that. So I think that's one of the most th difficult things for dads to do is to show their failures to their kids that, you know, they want to be seen as the hero. They want to be the strong one, like I mentioned. And, and yeah, bringing that out, uh, how do we, kind of start breaking through those, those walls? Well, I, a good, great question. I think, I think it comes down to, it has to be a personal decision and understanding first, yeah. right? Like, like each dad or each guy has to get to the point of like, uh, give permission to himself to not be a superhero all the time or, or ch change the internal definition of superhero. Right. I think mm -hmm. that's actually what's going on. Yeah. And I think, I think the first step to that honestly is to see it modeled and hear it modeled and feel it modeled, uh, or experience it from another man and especially another man that maybe you have respect for. And it, that is when that happens, that's like, um, a door opens that you can't ever really shut again, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I mean, I think that's like the internal piece of it. The external piece is just to, um, honestly, I mean, are you familiar with Wim Hof and the yes. ice baths yeah. and mm -hmm. all that stuff? If we treat our emotions like we treat a cold bath or a cold stream or an ice bath, yeah in the sense that we can start practicing, we have to actually practice feeling. Right. We jump out of our feelings. We jump out of our experience. We, we disassociate, we distract, right? Mm -hmm. And when we feel something, we have to breathe. We got to slow down and we got to know that it's, you know, we have this sort of collective terror about feeling yeah. things, but um, you can't just talk about emotions. You have to have them too. Right. You have to actually feel them. So, um, I mean, that, and that's the great thing now, you know, there's all kinds of resources and there's a whole movement. And I, I believe that, you know, who knows if it'll stick all the way through mainstream culture or not, but there certainly is a big, um, wave right now of recognizing that, listen, guys, this is like, this kind of has to happen. You know, we need to, we need to grow up in this area. We need to mature in this area because um, the alternative is not proving 
helpful anymore. Yeah. So. I mean, we're, we're seeing it in, like you mentioned before, you know, the suicide rates are, are, are highest, um, you know, especially among, you know, teens, men, you know, young boys and stuff like that. The, the violence that uh, was prevalent along, you know, school shootings is predominantly young boys and those kind of things. So uh, having the ability to show our kids how to deal with those emotions uh, in a healthy way, I think is something that we really need to practice on. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, it's not, it's not necessarily a silver bullet that's going right. to um, fix everything, but I do feel like it is sort of at the source of, of um, at least it contributes to a heck of a lot of, of the crappy stuff that's mm-hmm. going on, you know? And I think that one thing that, well, I mean, what we're also talking about here is a, is a sense of applied empathy, yeah. right? So, so when we feel, when we're aware of what we feel, it, it sort of automatically switches on this emotional Wi-Fi, this sort of sort of expanded place where we can therefore pick up on other people. Right. So if we're not noticing what we're feeling, and this is this is all social mammal wiring, right? Mm-hmm. This is just kind of like how we're wired because we're social mammals and we need each other. So when we are present with what we feel, we can tap into what other people feel. And so that just kind of automatically creates this, this uh, scenario of empathy. And when that is switched on, it is, it's just, it's, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very hard to hurt other people. Yeah, It's yeah. very hard when you can feel the impact on other people around you, it begins to drive your, your choices and your behaviors in a pretty deep way. Yeah. And so there's just sort of this simple mammalian logic behind all this stuff that if we feel, we feel other people, if we feel other people where it's, it's like, we don't want it. People are generally good, right? We don't yeah. want to go around hurting people. That's not, it's not what we're designed to do. No. Yeah. Yeah. So switching it up a little bit, um, you know, say a guy's been, married for you know quite a while 20 years or whatever it is and and they're you know there, there's something in there that that there's they're having issues with right and then they feel this block that they can't talk to their their spouse or they feel like they can't talk to their spouse about it. Mm-hmm. what you know what tools do you have available or or i don't know possible resources that they might be able to reach out to you know because I feel like the the biggest block in something that like that, right, where you've been with someone for so long that they have this image of you, or at least you think they have this image of you, mm-hmm. changing that image is super scary, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. So uh, the question is where to go for support or resources. Right. I mean, a, a couple a couple immediate things jump out. I mean, we uh, we're we're, we're just launching now a, uh, a matching tool to find men's groups, every man groups, anywhere in your community. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, anywhere in the world where there are groups, they'll be online. You can, you can just search where you are and see if there's one around. And there's also uh, support materials to start your own. So hmm. that's one, one option for sure. I would also say, also say is find a good therapist. <laughs> just do it. Um, there is, we are, we are in deep support of therapy and therapists and, and, and good people that, that have been trained to, to be there and listen and support you. I feel like, um, the first step is, is getting support. Honestly, yeah. I mean, you, you could cowboy this, right? You could <laughs> just like, uh, go home, um, to your spouse and, and try things, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And from, you know, working with thousands, tens of thousands of people, like get some support first. Don't, don't try to muscle this like every other damn thing in your life. You know, (laughs) don't, don't try to think that's the whole point here is, is that, um, this stuff doesn't work on an Island. It just doesn't. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, go to the, go to listen to the, to the Everyman podcast. I mean, one thing I'm proud of with the show is that, you know, I just got done with an expedition, um, in Montana, we, we led 20 guys through the wilderness for, for about eight days. And, you know, at the end, one of the guys that he was in a different group and I didn't get much time with him, but he came up to me with a, you know, a bit of a tear in his eyes. I was just like, thank you so much. He said, I listened to every single episode you've ever done. And it's what I needed to get me here. It's what I needed to just sort of 
get a sense of what you guys are doing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other good podcasts out there too. I, I think that, um, even in men's health, this, this, this month, this, um, has a whole section on, I forget what they called it, but men who are growing, right. This whole sort of economy, this mm. whole wave of, of what's happening, um, for men. So, you know, grab the, I guess it would be the September edition of men's health and there's, there's no financial connection here, but it was, it was a good article. So and there's lots of resources and lots of podcasts, lots of good stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely vouch for the every man podcast. I, I've, um, I guess I discovered you probably about a year ago or so, and it's been amazing. I, very, very grateful for everything you've, you've put together on there. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, aside from that, um, you know, um, sorry, question came up while you're talking and now I totally lost it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, aside from that there, you know, we've, we always hear about the power of, uh, you know, meditation and those kind of things. And, um, oh, that's where I was going. You know, the stigma of, you know, getting help, um, has really, at least in my mind, it seems to have kind of, you know, gone down a bit. It's, it's not as much of a stigma as I think it was, you know, five, yeah. 10 years ago, you know, yeah. you know, if, if a guy said, you know, five, 10 years ago, I'm, you know, I'm going to a therapist like, oh, what's wrong with you. Right. Not, yeah. not, I want to be better. I'm, I'm good, but I want to be better. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think that whole world is, is expanding, you know, things like things like therapy, things like men's groups, things yeah. like meditation, meditation is a big one. You know, I think the, um, in some way our physical health has really, you know, that whole industry, I, I like to look at it or kind of, you know, at one point when you, there was something up with your body or you wanted to know something about your health, you went to your doctor, right? right? And today, today, now what do you do? You have a nutritionist, you have, <laughs> you know, ex, you have supplementation experts, you have the ice bath people, you got the, you know, a million different ways to eat, a million different ways to work out. I and mean, it really just, to me, ex, that whole industry exploded, the health and wellness industry. Yeah. And I, I really feel like we're on the on the verge of, of a similar thing happening in our mental health and emotional health in the sense that, um, you know, I think, I think therapy is gaining ground and will only continue to gain ground because it's so, it's so necessary. Uh, but I do think that what we're kind of learning and seeing is that we have a lot of capacity within us to help each other and to mm -hmm. be there for each other. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, some of these skills are, you know, really just basic human skills that not only uh, serve us in a, in sort of a, a growth setting, but serve us in our everyday life and where we go. Um, so yeah, it's, and uh, you know, the other thing I'd say is when, once you sort of jump off the cliff and you, and you start to, to really take care of yourself in these ways, I mean, it, it's, it's fun, you know, it's scary, but it's, uh, it's just a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff on the end of the rainbow, actually all the, <laughs> all the way along it. So. Yeah. I think any, any steps you take to create a better you, right. Is, is going to bring yeah. results in the end. So, uh, yeah. even if you're stumbling into, <laughs> into it, right. Uh, it's better to, to make some steps forward and, and stumble versus not go anywhere. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Dan, thank you very much, man. I want to be mindful of your time, but, uh, in, in closing anywhere that our listeners can kind of, uh, learn more about you, see what you're into. I know we got the, the every man and we'll have, um, uh, links for, for the website there on, on the show notes, but anywhere else you want to point our listeners to. Yeah, I do actually. So I just, we just put up a library of guided meditations for, for soon to be dads, new dads, and then old dads, any dads <laughs> on a, a really sweet meditation app called expectful. And, um, that is out and available now. And there's about 30 meditations that I created that really are there to support, um, are us as dads really to sort of get clear on what we want and who we are and, yeah. um, really good stuff. So you can find that at on the app store, it's called expectful and it's a, uh, it's a parenting app. It's really sweet. Excellent. Yeah. And I'll make sure to, uh, get some links from you, uh, and put those on the show notes as well. So cool. Again, thank you very much, Dan. I, I appreciate all the time you've taken to uh, speak with us today. Um, I hope, uh, you know, our listeners got a lot of, out of this. I, I think it was great conversation. So uh, thank you very much, man. 
Yeah, thank you. Take care. Yeah, you too. Today's podcast was once again sponsored by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash epicdad. With over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, I know you'll find something that is amazing. Thank you all for listening to this week's podcast. All the links for Dan and Everyman will be available on the show notes for this episode at epicdadpodcast.com slash 012. You'll also find links to our Facebook community. If you are looking for a place to connect with other dads who are working towards making their lives epic, head on over there to epicdadpodcast.com slash community, and you'll be sent straight to the group page where you can request access. On next week's episode, we talk to Tom Sylvester, an author and fellow podcaster, about creating the lifestyle and business that supports the way you want to live. Remember, if you want to support what I'm doing here, then head over to epicdadpodcast.com slash review to subscribe and leave a review over on iTunes. You can also do the same on Stitcher, Google Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast feed from. So until next time, have an epic day. 